Good evening, wrestling fans, and welcome to AIWF Ringside Wrestling. Good to have you with us. Uh, we're not able to come to you this week on Facebook Live because of an ongoing issue with our friends at Zoom, uh, which we're working diligently to um, get resolved, but it's not going so well so far. But we're working on it, and hopefully uh, we're, we're going to get this thing out to podcast platforms uh and to youtube although the youtube will probably i'm going to finagle with the settings because we're gonna talk about the uh media scrum that happened after the aew show this past sunday night and we're gonna play the video uh from that so that our listeners on the audio side can hear cm punk's comments uh, and then we'll discuss those afterwards but there may be an issue with copyright on YouTube. So what I'm going to make sure I do is uh, transfer uh, the file to you, Rick Diesel. Maybe we can get the video up on the Mid-Atlantic page after the fact. And uh, as, as Rick Diesel doing some uh, maintenance work on his facial hair there, as we can all see, Sergeant Stryker has joined us. Gentlemen, how are you this evening? Man, I've been running myself to death today, man, but that's all right. I'm here. I got another one to do after this. What, a podcast? Well, kind of. Tease Treats is going live. I know we're doing this. What is this? Tuesday, Wednesday? What what day is it? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. It's Wednesday at 7 o'clock when we're recording this. And to, tonight at 8.30, I have to go help with the with a, uh, the, the Tease Creations thing. I don't know. God bless me. Yeah, it's I, but yeah, I got another show to do after this one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, and that never work never stops in showbiz, even if you do it as a hobby. My goodness. All right. Well, I tell you what, fellas, let's get into it and let's uh let's pay some bills real quick before we get into this very, very controversial video that's uh an audio that's been the talk of the wrestling world uh for the last several days and then we will discuss it afterwards uh but and of course uh can everybody see the slideshow yes all right yes. Hey, as you know we're putting the headlock on the high advertising prices here on aiwf ringside wrestling uh all those figures the ones you need to know about is ten dollars a month can get you advertising on this program a 30 second to one minute read which we will demonstrate for you shortly uh if you want a video commercial produced we can do that for you for thirty dollars a month uh it's we do this show every week the barring technical difficulties of the host being out of town on vacation which does not happen much uh but you can uh, reach out to us at aiwf20 at hotmail.com or you can catch up with me at a live event uh and <laughs> your ads will appear all over these platforms facebook although we're having trouble with that right now instagram youtube uh, all your favorite podcast platform is an aiwf roku channel we're hoping to get this program added to the Roku channel in the archives pretty soon. And, uh, but anyway, uh, it's, it's a great advertising opportunity for those of you with small businesses, only $10 a month, not taking much risk. You can't go into Starbucks and get two cups of coffee for that. So I uh, hope you'll reach out to us next big show for the AIWF mid Atlantic takes place. Saturday, September that was last week. Oh, that's the last one. I thought I had the 17th yeah. up here. Well, let's just skip that slide. As we do this live to tape, I'm not going to edit that out. We do have a new sponsor here on the program. We were talking earlier about Tease Creations Custom Apparel. And they are, oh man, they are have busted wide open with all kinds of sweatshirts, t-shirts, just about anything you can think of. As you can see, some of the designs here uh, is Mama Needs a Venti. Uh, I'm not sure about the T-Rex with the sunglasses and the hat and the shoes, but it's a pretty cool looking design. They can find you just about any type of design or custom make T-shirts, sweatshirts for you. And uh, I don't know, if are they doing any other type of apparel, Rick Diesel, besides T-shirts and sweatshirts right now? Well, I mean, hoodies in there. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty soon, they're. I think they're going to get into to making tumblers, you know, the things that the women walk through the mall yeah them things right there they're gonna start making them you know that the uh, people hide alcohol in when they're at the mall um <laughs> and uh tell it uh, tell and i and there was a mention of leggings so i don't know man i you know me i get sucked into this stuff somehow well 
anyway, Tease to Creations has joined us, and you can visit them on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Tease Creations or teasecreations22.com. That's the website. Now, you can actually order stuff directly off that website. So I would encourage... And yeah, I have a Shopify store, too. Oh, do they have a Shopify store as well? Okay, I'll try Whatever to... Whatever that is. I have no idea, but I will try to get the inf- find out the information and add that to the slide anyway. I have technology illiterate. Look at all the freaking shows I'm on. I know, right? <laughs> I, I, I can barely operate Excel and PowerPoint, and yet we get the we get this show out every week with dozens and dozens of views. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you for all your support. But uh, yeah, so anyway, but Tease Creations, a brand new sponsor, and we'd like to thank them for joining us. Also, as usual, uh, Bill Pauly, uh has us uh, plugging uh, websites that benefit and places that benefit the disabled folks around the state of North Carolina. Of course, if you're not in North Carolina, if you're Virginia or South Carolina or any place else in the union, uh, you can you can Google uh, use your Google machine and find places to help folks with disabilities. Uh, Bill Pauly tells us the reason he's sponsoring this company is because he's disabled. He was told his whole life he couldn't do things, and he still has his learning disabilities to this day. When he was a kid, it was his dream to be in the wrestling business. 14 years later, he's done everything in the wrestling business. Now I'm starting over as a referee to show my son that is disabled and others who are disabled as well. They can live their dreams, whatever it may be. And the website that we're plugging right now is arcnc.org. That's arcnc.org, A-R-C-N-C.org. Uh, and they are a site of their charity, but they do a lot of services for folks with disabilities. So if you are disabled and need assistance, or you know someone that's disabled and need assistance, visit their website, arcnc.org. That's A-R-N-C.org. And don't forget, we are on Instagram. All you have to do is- slide. Hey, it's a fancy new slideshow you got here, Matt. Yeah, I was playing around with it. I I, uh, won, I got so excited when Tease Creations came on board. I was like, man, we need to rework this whole thing. And so, uh, and then, the, of course, oh, Matt, the- Matt, can I can I stop you right there for a second and drop a blockbuster on you? Um. Well, okay. Artist Striker selling these written videos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're selling... Are we going to start selling fetish videos on here? Like dropping? Well, ac- actually, actually, no. It goes back to the luscious Kevin days. Oh, explicit videos. <laughs> oh Lord! Yeah. But no, starting, uh, starting with the show live next week. Hopefully, uh, there will be a new sponsorship called Premier Auto Detailing, which is ran by me as the manager and. I'm going to be sponsoring a lot of your shows too. All right. I hope it comes through because you just got away with a free plug. So <laughs> yes, give me six bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna charge you the weekly rate for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're hoping to add you to the fold very soon. I, I'm I'm excited about that. Uh, and I'm sure the fans are excited about that as well. Um but yeah, it's uh, it's great, and 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 I have to t- tell everybody thanks so much for your support. You know, we we are a little bitty podcast that covers independent wrestling, and we cover the national stuff uh, when it's pertinent. And we, boy, I tell you, a few weeks ago we covered Vince McMahon leaving the WWE, and I and we had talked about it and talked about it and talked about it, and I thought that was man, that was probably going to be the biggest story we ever cover on this show. Well, then this weekend happened and look, it started off pretty good. We, uh, on the indie level, we had our flea market show Saturday at five and, um, I had a good turnout for that. Uh, I thought I was going to come up here and talk about, you know, how Corey Etzel and Matt Anderson tore the house down. And if anybody has got any footage of that match, I'm looking for it. So uh, I did not take footage of that match, but if anybody took footage of that match outside uh, that was in the stands or anything, please hit me up. Uh, I am interested in getting my hands on that footage <laughs> and talking about the, some the of the network didn't think it was important enough to be there and film. Mm-mm. Shots fired, Kevin Phoenix. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, like I, it's like I always say, if he's not producing himself, then it's not on the network. 
Mm. It's too bad we're not live now because that would have drawn. <laughs> he, he'd be on, he'd be on here lickety split after he heard that comment. <laughs> all, right. all right, so we had that WWE had their uh, clash at the castle, uh, and uh, I know now what Kevin Stryker, you and Darren were trying to keep quiet from me. Why you know I held my ears Saturday. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I know what you were saying about seeing it coming, but it was still a nice surprise. So I'm glad I didn't hear you guys talking about it, right? With Dominic right. Mysterio. I love yes. it. Absolutely yes. love it. But they, they did a great show, big soccer stadium. That was a lot of fun. The NXT had a show on Sunday uh, during the afternoon that everybody talked about. It was a lot of fun. And then AEW had their big pay-per-view in Chicago all out Sunday night. And CM Punk won the world title from Dean Ambrose. Now, after that, you know, nice John Moxley this week. Oh, yeah, J- John Moxley. I'm sorry, I'm still calling him yeah. Dean Ambrose. I'm still stuck in 2013. I'm sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so to set this up a little bit for those of you who do not know or might be casual wrestling fans, back in May, they were setting up a match between uh CM Punk and Hangman Adam Page. And a lot of people around here know Adam Page came through the Mid-Atlantic as he did many of the independent wrestling federations in this area when he was fresh out of high school. Now, I have worked on a couple of shows with Adam Page. I do not know Adam Page. I'm not friends with Adam Page. We just, our paths have not crossed in many years. And and frankly, when they did cross, we we just didn't talk much. Uh, I was under the delusion for many years that he was one of the Myrtle Beach gang, but I just found out, you know, recently that he was one of the Virginia gang with Justin Flash, Jason Blade, and that crowd. So anyway, they were doing a build up to this pay-per-view and Adam Page came out and cut, cut a weird promo on CM Punk talking about he was a poison to the locker room and all that kind of stuff. And everybody was kind of confused, like, well, was he turned into a bad guy or what's going on here? Well, CM Punk gets injured not long after that, has to go out for a few months. He recently came back and well, on an episode of Dynamite, went out there and challenged Adam Page. And a lot of people were saying, and I'm not going to explain this for those of you who don't know, but those of you who do know what the expression going into business for yourself means, everybody was wondering why CM Punk did that. And evidently, it was a reaction to what Adam Page had said. Well, at the media scrum after the pay-per-view on Sunday night, CM Punk was the first one to come out and talk to the press. Now, for those of you listening, we're going to set this up. You're going to hear a lot of bags rattling and everything. Actually, CM Punk brings out some cans of, I don't think it's soda. I think it's like seltzer water or something. And he's eating muffins from a bakery there in Chicago while he's talking. Now, for those of you that can see the video, or if you do not, have not seen it yet, go out of your way on YouTube, go and search Denise Salcedo, because this is the one with the best audio. Denise Salcedo. Let me go ahead and share my screen so I can, so people can see uh, what they need to, oh, hang on a second. It might make it easier with a visual aid here so you can see which one you need to go to. All right, guys, can you see the YouTube screen here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. So you can see the name right here, Denise Salcedo. She does some work for Wrestling Observer Live and everything. She does some Q&As and everything. She's the right perky young lady uh, and seems to really like wrestling. But the reason we're using her video is because the audio is clear. Now, this is a fairly long clip. It's going to take about over 10 minutes to listen to, but I think it's worth listening to. I will warn you in advance. There is a lot of strong language. If somehow you have not listened to this already, but I think it's important for you, Rick Diesel and Sergeant Stryker. If you've not seen this video, as you watch it, pay attention to Tony Khan's face. It is priceless, his facial expressions. So let's see here. Let me ask you if you can hear it. Can you hear? No, you cannot. Okay. All right. Hang on. Let's try this again. Be better. Need a louder audio. Well, I, pr- I probably didn't uh, click the check boxes I needed to. Yep, yeah, that's what that's what happened. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's try this again. Let me know if you can hear it. Your fancies themselves as a journalist. Yeah. We good now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, here. Here we go. A lot of, a lot Just say your name and your. Cool. Hi, uh, Nick Howes with Wrestling Inc. I'll uh, start, Nick. Um, show of hands. Who here fancies themselves as a journalist? 
You're a journalist, Nick? All right. I try my best. Okay. Um, um, no, real, real quick. Go ahead. Um, you still do improv? <laughs> no, not a little bit. No? No. When you did improv, who'd you do improv with? Uh, I did it with uh, uh, Scott Colton. Hmm. Okay, so you fancy yourself a journalist. Would you say you're friends with Scott Colton? Uh, no, I haven't talked to Scott in some time. So you're not friends with him? Uh, no, no, Scott and I do not see eye to eye. Oh, wow. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> My point is, if you fancy yourself a journalist, even if it's for the silly world of professional wrestling, and you have journalistic integrity, people who report things mostly that are bullshit and slanderous lies against myself. If you are friends with somebody, you blew my spot. If you're not friends with them, I apologize. It's okay. But you should probably disclose who you're friends with. I'm not friends um, with you. I haven't had Scott. anything to do with Scott Colton in almost a decade. Probably wanted nothing to do with him even longer than that. It's fucking unfortunate that I have to come up here and speak on this when I'm on my time and this is a fucking business. Uh, why I am a grown ass adult man and I decide not to be friends with somebody is nobody else's fucking business. But my friends, if I fall backwards, will catch me. Scott Colton, I felt, never would have. My problem was I wanted to bring a guy with me to the top that did not want to see me at the top, okay? You call it jealousy, you call it envy, whatever the fuck it is. My relationship with Scott Colton ended long before I paid all of his bills. I have every receipt, I have every invoice, I have every email. I have the email where he says, and I quote, I agree to go our separate ways. I will get my own lawyer and you do not have to pay anymore. That's an email that I have. The only reason the public did not see is because when I finally had to counter sue him through discovery, we discovered he shared a bank account with his mother. That's a fact. And as soon as we discovered that fact and we subpoenaed old Marsha, he sent the email, oh, can we please drop all this? Now, it's 2022. I haven't been friends with this guy since at least 2014, late 2013. And the fact that I have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves EVPs and couldn't fucking manage a target and they spread lies and bullshit and, and put into a media that I got somebody fired when I have fuck all to do with him. Want nothing to do with him. Do not care where he works, where he doesn't work, where he eats, where he sleeps. And the fact that I have to get up here and do this in 2022 is fucking embarrassing. And if y'all are at fault, fuck you. If you're not, I apologize. But what did I ever do in this world to, go, to deserve an empty-headed fucking dumb fuck like Hangman Adam Page to go out on national television and fucking go into business for himself? For what? What did I do? Dave, what did I ever do? You tell me. Didn't do a goddamn thing. What's your name, sir? Dominic D'Angelo. Fuck the Pittsburgh Packers. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you I'm doing? Pittsburgh. <laughs> I made it really clear in Forbes, and I just want to make it clear again. Nick, it's when... not his position to make it very fucking clear. There's people who call themselves EVPs that should have fucking known better. This shit was none of their business. I understand sticking up for your fucking friends. I fucking get it. I stuck up for that guy more than anybody. Okay? I paid his bills until I didn't, and it was my decision not to. Yeah, but I shouldn't have no commented when Nick first said it. It's my I, fault, and I if I hadn't, it's my that. fault. It's my I fault. appreciate it. I should have just I'm, taken a head on because you never but said But I'm trying anything. to run a fucking business, and when somebody who hasn't done a damn thing in this business jeopardizes the first million dollar house that this company has ever drawn off of my back and goes on national television and does that, it's a disgrace to this industry, it's a disgrace to this company. Now, we're far beyond apologies. Right? I gave him a fucking chance. It did not get handled, and you saw what I had to do, which is very regrettable, lowering myself to his fucking level. But that's where we're at right now. And I will still walk up and down this hallway and say, if you have a fucking problem with me, take it up with me. Let's fucking go. What's your question, Nick? Uh, first of all, you're always very nice to me, and thank you. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask about MJF, obviously. Uh, he played a, a voicemail from you before he came out. Obviously confronted you, uh, Punk. Um, 
why now? Why, why, why is MJF back in the fold now? How do you both feel about him being around? How do you feel about the time he spent away? All of that. Well, if I may, I'm the one who asked him to come back because uh, MJF's a big star in this company and this is a, one of the biggest events. A year ago, CM Funk debuted here and I thought it was right for the fans. And like I said, for the fans, I thought the best thing that we could do as a company was bring MJF back. And he wants me to work with pricks constantly. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, two of the top wrestlers in the world, MJF and CM Punk, could be oh. a big match down the line. Sorry to keep bringing this fucking up, but I've never spoken his word and I don't know how long, so I'm a little fucking pissed off about it. That's fine. When it came down that he was going to sue me, I asked to talk to him. He refused. I asked for mediation. It was denied. I offered him money. He said it was not enough. He went ahead with the lawsuit and sued. It's his fucking funeral. I don't care. He shares a bank account with his mother. It tells you all you need to know about what kind of character that is. You were always very nice to me. Thank you. I appreciate it, Nick. I'm sorry if I'm a little fucking snippy. That's fine. That's I'm fine. hurt and I'm old and I, I'm fucking tired. I totally, and I work with fucking children. I respect your situation. I regret not answering your question. And the first I time only asked, asked it because I have some familiarity and just wanted some clarification on the story. Yeah, I, didn't break I the should story. have just taken a head on like I did with Blake and Forbes recently. We're all learning here, Tony. It's okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you guys. This is from Mindy's Bakery, by the way. It's a great place in Chicago. If you like pastries and baked goods, I suggest you go there. They're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, though. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. It's okay. All right, thanks. So it's I've good as plug. I've been a couple candidates in my old life. I don't think I've ever been as nervous as I am right now, but I'll, I'll direct this one to Tony. Um, you saw the reaction MJF got when he came back out at the end of the night. Do you have any worries that uh, he was cheered in Chicago while CM Punk, hometown guys, were you think with worries about um, MJF kind of, he got pure moves before. He was one of the last pure heels left in wrestling and didn't try to get cheered. And now he's sort of set up as this anti-authority figure. Do you, do you worry about what that means for the psychology going forward, especially if it's going to take on Punk? I think the fans want to see great wrestling matches. MJF's the top wrestler. CM Punk's the world champion, the top wrestler in the world. And I think having the top contenders, whoever came out of this match, Tonight, MJF sets up as a great challenger, and now CM Punk uh, is the world champion. MJF being back, a lot of fans were excited to see it, but anytime somebody makes a comeback in the world of wrestling, generally you get a really big reaction. Am I worried about it? No, not really. Like We have one of the most charismatic, popular professional wrestlers in the world right here, and frankly, the fans can react however they want. That's what's great about AEW and pro wrestling. We're not trying to tell people what to think. This is a really compelling story. People were emotionally moved. People are calling that a great ending, and I'm really glad people liked it. But the fact is, it was a great match, and it was a great ending, and now we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Is that going to headline Arthur Ashe, uh, that match? I'm not going to comment on it. You don't know. Oh, thank you. I'll tell you why I'm upset about it. It's because if you're an EVP, you don't try to middle your top baby face. Try to get your niche audience that's on the internet to hate him for some made-up bullshit rumor. Really pisses me off. Stepping on your own dick, trying to fucking, you know, make money, sell tickets, fill arenas, and these stupid guys think they're in Reseda. Tom? Yep, Dominic D'Angelo at freeshows.com. Uh, Punk, last time we were here last year, I asked you about like Terry Funk and his influence, like yeah. the legacy going on. Kind of, uh, and this is for you too, Tony. I kind of like, they're, they're, you do, you've done a great job with incorporating legends throughout, you know, the course of. AEW and as it goes on, I don't want to see uh, what you feel about how a lot of the modern talent today can kind of utilize some of the advice and take advice from like guys like William Regal and even like Jim Rock, Tony Schiavone. Um, I know I'm missing Jake Roberts, plenty I'm missing, I'm sure. But I just kind of want to get both your perspectives on that and how that can kind of go a little bit more to to help you guys out grow as a company. We have a uh, a locker room full of. Pretty brilliant minds, you know, Jerry Lynn, Dean Malenko, Mark Henry. You know, I, when I came back and I cut my promo my second week here, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty decent, you know what I mean? I kind of blur the lines a little bit. What's he doing? How oh, crazy Phil. He's going into business for himself, and really I was just defending myself. But, you know, you, you, you mix that in with attacking Moxley and mention, um, you know, Kingston being the second best Kingston, which is a pretty great line. Um, you know, uh, but our locker room for all the wisdom and brilliance it has isn't worth shit when you have an empty headed idiot who's never done anything in the business do public interviews and say, no, I don't really take advice. 
Who the fuck do you think you are? You know? That's stupid. I'm on a team with Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, and I, I, don't, need to, I don't need to work on my swing. You don't, I'm not going to listen to these guys. They're going to tell me how to swing a baseball. Fucking go fuck yourself. That's how I feel about it. I, I, I dare you to fucking say that to Terry Funk's face. I don't need to listen to you, Mr. Funk. I know what I'm doing. Fucking grow up. Next question over here. Question for Funk. I'm sorry, speak up. What? Sorry, we can't hear you. Sorry. Um, question for CM Funk, uh, Bill Lindsay from Leach Report. Um, I think you caught a lot of people by surprise your loss two weeks ago, and your foot injury came into play, and I wonder, you know, how much of that came into play tonight? All right, I'm going to stop it right there um, because at this point, CM Punk discusses his foot injury and recovering from that and everything. And that was pretty much all the really heavy stuff he had to say. Um, gentlemen, first things first, I mean, he was talking about Adam Page there at the end when, when he was talking about, uh, I don't I don't really take advice. Adam Page had said in an interview, I can't remember, I saw it on Twitter a couple of weeks ago that he didn't feel like that he needed to take advice from the legend wrestlers that were in AEW. To me, it sounded like bullshit, so I kept scrolling and didn't think twice about it. But evidently, it's real that Adam Page did make that comment. So my first question to you guys is, even though we've heard about Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks being EVPs and having their own little clique and it's been a known fact since even before Cody Rhodes left AEW was CM Punk out of line to bring this up in this way in a public forum. You either want whoever wants to go first, just go. Uh, out of line in what way? Out of line in, in bringing up dirty laundry from behind the scenes in a public forum. Uh, Yes and no. I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll go yes and no on that. I mean, as far as the the no why goes, because I mean, if somebody's going to do a a shoot interview or a shoot promo or whatever, saying that they don't take advice and do this and do that. Of course, if, if they're going to go public with that, then why not go public with what CM Punk just said? But at the same time, shit like that needs to be handled in a locker room or behind closed doors on both parties. Rick Diesel, what's your humble opinion? I I, I don't think – my problem with, with what CM Punk done was the fact that he sat right there and portrayed himself as this um, professional. Now who wants to come in? I'm going to go get Haley. Go on with your bad self. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, I told you, man. That's why I won't be able to do the thing last night because it's a madhouse here. Yeah. Construction and stuff going on. But anyway, uh, my problem was what CM Punk. And, and, and I get that Adam Page should never done it to begin with. I know we didn't raise him that way, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Well, um, now, that being, that being said, Rick, I mean, I've respected Adam Page for a while, but for, I mean, for a very long time and so proud of what, where he came from and what he's done, but he's going to go back and say that he don't need advice from legends. Then uh, that sort of lost a little bit of respect that I had for him. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, uh, CM Punk was portraying himself as this ultimate professional and the big, you know what I'm saying? And just putting himself yeah. over so big, but then turned right around and committed a cardinal sin by exposing stuff in the business that should have been left in the locker room. It should, mm -hmm. It's none of the fans' business. I mean, right. you know what I'm saying? And for CM Punk to talk trash about Adam Page for doing it, that just puts him uh, in on the same level as the person he's complaining about. Yeah. Rise above him. I agree. Adam Page should have never opened his mouth to begin with. He should have never said the things that he done because I remember when he was just a humble little kid mm -hmm. who barely even spoke. I mean, he was so quiet and humble in the locker room. Yeah. Um, 
And but I, but he's been through a lot yes, in, uh, in all those years. He's traveled the world. He's 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 experienced things that that you know most people in this business will never. But and, he, and he's had to sacrifice more than any of us know. You know, we right. talked about yes, that with exactly. Justin Flash. Exactly. Yeah. But on the same aspect, you know, CM Punk, you know, don't if, if you live in glass houses, don't throw stones. Yeah. Well, you know, CM Punk has been known for years, going back to his WWE days to have anger issues and all that kind of stuff. And I thought maybe that he had grown out of that. Uh, but evidently not. Um, my leopard can't change his spots and I'm not trying to take sides. I don't know CM Punk. I never met the guy, you know, at least I can say I met Adam page, but any of the other principals involved, never met him. You know, then after we've learned since then CM Punk goes into his dressing room, uh, and the, uh, Kenny Omega and the young books burst in there. Allegedly that a big fight breaks out. Both the young bucks get one of them gets punched, the other one gets hit with a chair. You know, this guy, Axe Steel or, or whatever his name is, was involved. It is purportedly one of the people that trained CM Punk. He's involved in this melee. There's several behind the scenes staff members uh, involved in this melee. All of them have been suspended. We don't know how they're going to handle it on Dynamite tonight. Uh, how it's going to be addressed. I don't think you can ignore it. By the time you guys hear this podcast, Dynamite's probably already going to be on the air and we may have some answers. But um, it was, it definitely, it definitely has gotten ugly, uh, even uglier than that press conference. And it, it I, t- I have tells- a question, Matt. Yeah. What makes this story so big? Because I don't think anybody's ever in, public like cm punk just did aired that kind of behind the scenes dirty laundry didn't he do it that at wwe not in not in a profanity laden tirade like this it's not like this is the first time there's been backstage altercations hell bruiser brody died yeah in a shower yeah yeah stabbed to death yeah backstage Uh, i I mean it's not like this is the biggest story i mean you know what i'm saying (laughs) It's right. just another bunch of egos beat, but bang, you know, bump, beating each other in the goddamn head, you know, knocking heads backstage. It happens all the time. It it does, but maybe this is different because of the age we live in. Like when Bruiser Brody, that happened in 1987. You know, word did not get back to the American wrestling fans until it was in the magazines months after it happened. I think the murder trial had already taken place by then. You know, unless you were there, you didn't know. Unless you're in a dressing room, you de- generally did not know about this kind of stuff unless you read the Meltzer dirt sheets, you know, and how many. Look how, look how well we covered up TX and Neil Leathers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a story I ain't getting told here. <laughs> I mean, you know, come on, Matt. You yeah. run blockade for that one, man. I know, I know. And and listen, if any of you fans want to hear that story, you just come talk to me at a show and we'll talk where there's no recording devices around. There you go. See, that's how it's done, Matt. That's yeah. how it's done. But see, I think that this one, in this era of 24-7 news cycle, right? You know, we've got the internet. You can find out information instantly. This was broadcast live on YouTube as it happened. The video we showed from Denise, I don't know if she streamed it live or not, but the AEW scrum, the official video from AEW, something was wrong with the sound. So that's the oh, reason I used oh, the new, I, I used uh used the um the footage from Denise so you could hear it better, you know. But uh I don't know. I guess it's just the age we live in, and I've never seen anything like this public. I watched it three times Monday because I could not believe it. Let me ask you another question, man. I and I'm curious, I'm I'm really curious about this. And these questions are people the questions I feel like is going through people's minds. Um, why didn't AEW stop it? Why did they stop him? I mean, Tony Khan sitting right beside of him, you know, good and well. There was plenty of producers and and whoever right there nearby mm-hmm. maybe Did they, they condone they, it maybe or they were they are they that afraid of punk or did they know it was coming mm. and, and that has been a subject of debate you know hotly contested subject of debate on social media this week and 
mostly on on both sides. All they knew it was coming, and then the other side is like, "Oh, you're crazy, you're stupid," you know. And then the name calling starts, and you can't can't get anywhere. But that, that's today's that, society. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I, I just think that's that's interesting questions because if if that happened in most press conferences, or I mean, just, let's just say let's let's just say that uh, an NFL quarterback went off on a rant like that. After a, after a playoff game, how long would the would the NFL allow those cameras to film, or how long would they have let that press conference keep going before they shut it down? Uh, or Major League Baseball, or NBA, or about, I don't know. Well, they would have killed the Probably audio. Softball. Yeah, they would have killed the audio. That's for sure. And if you watch the official one on AEW's YouTube page, they never killed the audio. So why? I mean, uh, and, and and I know it's the business nowadays, and this is a question God named Joe Schmo from, you know, Tupelo is asking, is, you know, is this a storyline? Or is this part of the show? Twitter would have you say If it, it is, no. then God bless them. Yeah. God bless them, and they deserve to, to, to sell out Yankee Stadium next week. Yeah. If that's if this is if these guys can keep it together long enough to play this out as a storyline without getting butt hurt and it turning real, yeah, Shoot. I, hope, you know I hope so. I hope so. That would be one of the best things that's happened to the wrestling business in yes. years. Yeah, yeah, I if agree. They, if they pull this off and they turn out that that's what that is, then then they deserve every thing that they ever get and and they deserve to be number one for the next 20 years because what? that's what wrestling is supposed to be mm -hmm. that is what it used to be 25 30 years ago that it's just you know there's no internet but no, there were no there was no internet then and the, and the language you know they would have been cut out or whatever but anyway th that is what wrestling is supposed to be mm -hmm. that right there well, take if forth. that's what this is, then, then I applaud them. Standing ovation. Well, if that's the case, Tony Khan deserves an Emmy. Did you see his face? It looked like he threw up in his mouth about four times during all that. Exactly. So, you know, and I'm pulling for Tony Khan. I know I've said publicly that I ain't going back to a live AEW show until they get it straightened out. And I mean it. But I don't not want him to succeed. I think what he's trying to do is great. He's creating competition in the marketplace. And when there's competition, guess who wins? The wrestling fans. You know, a rising tide raises all ships, right? Right. So if there's competition in the WWE and AEW getting better, guess what's going to happen? People are going to get more interested in the indies, you know, and, and just like it happened in the 90s. You know, we drew some of our biggest crowds back then. So yes. when wrestling on TV was red hot. So I hope it is. I hope this is. Turns out that, if it is, whoever come up with this needs a million dollar bonus when it's over. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. I don't know I would go that far quite yet because now I'm still hoping that it is uh it is a storyline, but you gotta take for an example here with God bless him, I, I still doing it, Rick Flair and Jeff Jarrett for his last match. They done that whole documentary to make everything look like Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal just literally beat the shit out of him. Or I'm hoping, sorry, but excuse me for the language there. But oh, that's all right. The video's already killed. <laughs> you go yeah, I'm there. pretty sure you're okay with that. Yeah. CM Punk yeah, messed that up. Oh, well, yeah. Hey, we're going right. to have a big E on <laughs> Apple Podcasts next to the show yeah. today. But yeah, so then at the end of the documentary, at the final of the match, when Ric Flair is walking up the stage, who's the first one to come up and give him a uh, big ass hug? Jay Lethal. Yeah, because that's what the wrestling business is supposed to be. It's supposed right. to be a, a tag team or two individuals that dislike each other to the point they want to beat each other's ass. Right. That's what this business is supposed to be about. Not how many super kicks you can throw or how many jokes you can crack or how many weird costumes you can wear to the ring. No, it's supposed to be about two individuals or two sets of individuals that want to get out there and beat each other down till one of them can't get up 
and and gets p- his shoulders pinned to the mat for three for a three count. That's what this bit is supposed to be about, and that's what it's lost so mm-hmm. many years ago, and and that's why people may, they think it's a joke now. Mm-hmm. And if they could just please let this let this just be a storyline, and please let them start going in that direction. AEW will make a billion dollars this year. Oh, yeah. yeah. But but the thing that shakes my hope is uh, because of – all right, and again, I've never met Kenny Omega. He's he's probably a nice guy. But he is the same guy that wrestled a girl and a blow-up doll in Japan. He also – if you want to look it up, fellas it's not easy to stomach but he's wrestled some other weird matches and thongs in japan and done some other stuff that leads me to believe that he does not have the mental capacity to make something old school like this work no him or the young bucks neither one did yeah and they they don't the the problem with aew right now the biggest problem with aew is that kenny omega and the young bucks have way too much power yeah i agree They, they make way too many decisions and they know absolutely nothing about realism in this business. No. And what's sad is that K- Kenny Omega has the ability to put on brilliant wrestling matches. That last one he had with Jericho in Japan before the pandemic was was like a damn back alley fight. It was one of the roughest matches I've ever seen in my life. And I, I remember thinking, God almighty, man. I'm and glad- the young bucks are talented. This yes. stupid. Yes, yes. I mean, they're immature, and and they, I don't know if they just. I never liked them ever since they were back in TNA as Generation Me. Is that what they were? I don't remember. I, I mean, some bullshit like that that they done back then. But they've always been. Uh, they've always tried to be so theatrical, I guess, mm-hmm. or comedic. Yeah, but. They're more they're more about getting their spots in than they are anything. Yeah, they're just they're spot monkeys. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. Orange yeah. ace, orangutan spot monkeys. Yeah, and 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 uh Cornette calls them the Hardly boys because you know they look up to the Hardies and they do kind of look like them when they were younger, their gear and whatnot. Um, I hope everybody comes out for the better on this and they can end up making some money out of it, although my faith is not strong in that. I hope so. Uh, but I, 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 I am afraid that, that there's too many millennial egos or, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In, I'm just wondering that, why, that company. why there's so many knowledgeable legend minds in there that they're allowing the millennial egos to run the business. Because oh, the, the millennial egos are the EVPs. That's executive right. Executive vice presidents. They outrank them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They are the legends' bosses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so keep that, that in mind. I got what I got. What you, I'm yeah, put down now. Yeah, but okay. but Tony Khan put them in that position, and he can take them out. So mm-hmm. this is all you know. Tony he thinks Con- the company won't last without him. Yeah, I I don't know. I think I truly believe this. he thinks that. I I hope I think he thought that before this happened. But maybe that changed his mind because if you look at his face on that video and folks, if you're listening to us on audio, go out of your way on YouTube to see the video. Tony Khan looks like he's coming to some harsh realizations about the whole fucking show during that, during that rant. I mean, I mean, his face just, it it was. Well, Tony Khan is another one that has the wrong power in that business in that company. He has the wrong power. He 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 makes too many wrestling decisions, mm-hmm. and he shouldn't be because he's not. A, he's never been a wrestler, never wrestled a match. He's never been trained. He knows mm-hmm. nothing about this business other than, "Ooh, I'm just a big fan, and I want me a wrestling company." We've seen way too many of them. And yeah. so I'm just going. I'm. I got money. I'm gonna start me a wrestling company because I want to, and I'm gonna hire people to. Uh, you know, put on the show and I'm going to stand in front of all the cameras and the reporters and say, look what I did. Yeah. We see that all the time in this company. That's, that's why I'm a strong believer. And if you've never been a wrestler, you, sh- you should never be a promoter. If um, my whole thing is with Tony Khan, what we know about his background and his father owning these 
sports teams. One of Tony's uh, hats that he wears for teams, not only the Jaguars, but that soccer team over in the UK, is he's a statistician and he's really good with numbers. I would think, I would hope that after this, this is my hope for you, Tony Khan. I know we've never met, but I want you to know I'm praying for you and I want you to be successful in this. That he will take some of these older guys and and let them book this thing for him, you know, inside baseball here. It, you know, let them write the TV, let them write the pay-per-views. Of course, it has to come across your desk for final approval. It's your company. The buck stops with you. Nobody disputes that. But you've got Arn Anderson at your disposal. You got Mark Henry at your disposal. You heard some of the people. Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko. Jake Jake the Snake. Well, I don't know if Tully's that much involved with them anymore. Um, There's rumors that he walked out. Oh, I I didn't realize that. Yeah. I I listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts, dude. I do a lot of research. Um, But uh, my wife will tell you, anytime I'm in a car, I got, you know, got one in listening. Um. But, yeah, I don't even know if Tully's still with him. I think he does stuff for Ring of Honor. But, you know, you're right, though. I mean, he's got all these experienced people there. You know, and I know that you ain't going to get Kevin Sullivan off that island wherever he lives in the Pacific Northwest. But you know what? He booked WCW during their most successful time during the NWO run. Mm -hmm. Why can't you get him on a conference call once a week, once or twice a week with some of these other guys and do it that way? You know, but God Almighty, you got to get Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks out of those EVP positions. That is not doing anybody any favors. Just my yeah, opinion. I agree. He just got sucked into something he he can't get out of, man. Yeah, yeah, and, they, and they're coming up for a TV renewal deal soon. I understand with with uh, TBS. So uh, my understanding, their original deal is going to be up sometime within the next calendar year. So we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, guys, do you mind if I take a time out and pay some bills real quick here? Do that, Hold sir. <laughs> All right. Hold on just a second here. Share my screen. All right. Here we go with our original sponsor, our first one, Branch Management. They are a tree service that operates in Mount Airy, Surrey County area of North Carolina. They can help you with branches that are maybe too close to structures, normal pruning, or complete tree removal. They offer very competitive rates and, a free, and free estimates and are here to serve you. You may also be eligible for a $100 referral bonus. Now, for the tree service, you need to call 336-755-8204. That's 336-755-8204. Guess what, guys? Branch Management also does pressure washing and general landscaping as well as gutter cleaning. Now, if you're interested in those services, you need to call 336-648-2487. That's 336-648-2487. That's branch management. And, the you know, you can see the numbers there on your screen, or if you're listening to podcasts, I just gave them to you twice. Again, one more time for the tree service, 336-755-8204. And for the landscaping, pressure washing, and gutter cleaning, it's 336 336- Six four eight two four eight seven. We encourage you to give them a call. And of course, Tease Treats, our most delicious sponsor, is a food truck service that operates out of Mount Airy, North Carolina, that is available in most parts of the state. And they can be at multiple locations at the t- same time. They have a full menu, including hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken, milkshakes, ice cream, many varieties of funnel cakes, and now feature mini donuts. I love that mini no- donut contraption. I, I think that is just the neatest thing ever. When it comes to delicious quality as well as reasonable prices, you cannot beat Tea's Treats. You can find out more information about Tea's Treats on facebook.com slash Tea's Treats, or you can give them a call at 336-755-8204, 336-755-8204. Eight two zero four, and thank you for sponsoring this program. We love you, to East Streets. Oh, it's some of the best damn hot dog chili I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, oh mercy. So here we are. It's just a few minutes away from from dynamite, and all of our questions are going to be answered. Like I said, by the time you guys hear this, we'll, they'll probably already be answered. But uh, we've got a big show coming up uh, on the 17th. Is that correct, Rick Diesel? At yes, Veterans sir. Park, that's our next big show. 
Yes. We had a great reaction from the fans uh, at our at our uh, flea market show. You can actually see some of that footage over on Instagram that we took at the show over the weekend. That's Instagram.com, AIWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. We had a great time at that event. I don't know about you guys, but um, it, it was funny because we had people, y'all can hear me typing on the keyboard. We had people that were like parking on the side of the road and the kids got out and got uh, and got on the roof of the car. I know. Is that not cool? Yeah. And they were sitting there. Uh, they were sitting there taking videos and whatnot. And I think, I think mom's uh, battery ran out and she had to come get a jump because they sat there too long watching the wrestling match. <laughs> which I thought was freaking fantastic. Um, but it was, uh, it was definitely a, a very interesting show. Let's see if I can find that, uh, some footage here. No, that's not what I'm looking for, but, uh, yeah, here I'll share it with you guys again, but yeah, we had a great big deal. And then we've got a big show coming up, uh, coming up on the 17th. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you'll join us for that. Ticket prices back to normal. Uh, and here is the main event from Mount Airy. Uh, it was Mickey Fulp and Ty Tyson against the returning bad men. Daniel Halen and Robert Spade have made their return to AIWF Mid-Atlantic. Gentlemen, I am excited about that. They are the exact opposite of fan favorites. And boy, I tell you, the people in Mount Airy had not forgotten them. Boy, they, came, they really gave them a business, did they not? <laughs> but yeah, if you want to see this match in its entirety, just head on over to our Instagram page and uh, and you can watch that. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I, again, let me ask you guys expert opinion on something. Now, I know Rose Tyson is is aspiring to be a professional wrestler, but with her coming down to the ringside area with Ty Tyson and, and especially with everything that he's got going on with the fighters club, it just seems like a liability to me, you know, and I'm not trying to be mean. No, you're right. She's going to be, I don't think it should be happening. I mean, what, what is he going to do? Anything can happen. I mean, you know, Uh, I don't think he should put her in that predicament. I feel very strongly about that. You know, and and I know Clara is going to be chomping at the bit to get her hands on her now that, you know, it's kind of out there that she's training to wrestle. And she can. Because the minute she steps over into that ring, you know what I'm saying, it, it goes out the window. She's yeah, fair all- game. I'm sorry. Just like anybody else. Mm-hmm. Yep. You step in those ropes, anything can happen. That's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, it, you know, Rose keeps telling me, oh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Yeah, well, I hope you don't cost your dad any matches. That's all I can say. Right. <laughs> yep. Look. But I do, I, I will say this. She does have a, a wicked swing, though. <laughs> yeah. And if, yeah, if you watch this whole thing on Instagram, yeah, you'll see that at the end. Boy, poor Robert Spade found out. That Spoiler alert, alert, but whatever. Yeah, uh, that's all right. You know, it encourages people to go over there. I even offer a little bit of, co- try to do a little bit of commentary, and uh, but I kept getting distracted. The fans were really vocal that day, and there was a lot going on in this match. It was absolutely fantastic. You know, you, you don't expect that at, at shows like these sometimes, you know, but what, boy, I tell you what, AIWF made Atlantic, even the, uh, Free to the public shows. We delivered, man. It was just great, fantastic action. And again, I will remind everybody, if you were in that crowd Saturday and took video of the Corey Edsel, Ironhead, Matt Anderson match, please reach out to somebody with us. We'd love to get our hands on that video. It was absolutely spectacular. So, um, but I'm going to... I'm not going to give away the whole thing here. Got to go over to Instagram to see the rest of it, guys. Uh, so as we come back here, we've got a few minutes left in the program. We talked about the, it's the big drama with CM Punk this week. What else is going on in wrestling that we need to talk about? I think we covered it. I didn't know if we should bring this up or not, but you opened the door. Okay. Um, 
is control your narrative going to fail now? I mean, I knew it was going to fail eventually anyhow, but will it fail quicker now? Why? What happened? Well, Braun Strowman's back in WWE. Think you're going to let him run around and uh, run and help run the shows? And oh. uh, EC3 showed up at NWA. Oh, wow. So I didn't even know that he was with them. I didn't know he was doing anything on the independent circuit. It shows you how Who's much that? Braun Strowman. Oh, him and EC3 own. They run Control Your Narrative. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, and I know Control Your Narrative is, is um, it's uh, it's reincarnation of Jeff Jarrett's Global Force scam. Yeah. You know, where they go, they go around and they get uh, – gullible promoters to bring them in as a, you know it's you us versus you and you bring us in and we'll do a big show and blah 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 and i mean you know what i'm saying and oh. jeff jarrett pulled that scam for a while and now you know control your narratives doing it they they're just doing it they actually pulled it off a little better than jeff jarrett did you know because he mm -hmm. couldn't get it off the ground at all but these guys they're actually traveling they found enough promoters to fall for it that you know they're coming in and doing the, uh, uh, you know, us versus them thing, the invasion angle. And there's promoters that's, and, and that's just, that's how they're getting paid. You know, these so they, promoters they doing all the legwork for them. They don't have to do nothing. Just sit back and enjoy the show. So they collect a fee and show up and wrestle and don't have to do any of the promotion or any of that stuff. I, that's from what I understand. That's basically what it is. I mean, they'll do their promotion. You know, they'll put out their little, uh, you know, their little, memes and stuff hey we're gonna be here and we're gonna be here and, and you know they'll get tagged in some uh promotional stuff and they'll pass it on uh and as far as i know they're drawing decent houses mm -hmm. but it's it is what it is i mean you know what i'm saying it's just the, the old one of the oldest games in the book in this business is well, you know, hey let us ride your coattail and you do all the work and we'll take all the glory if you might knock on my door again, by the way. If you spend four thousand dollars to promote a show, but only take in fifteen hundred at the gate, what have you done? Uh, that's true. Yeah. So I mean, because you know EC3 and Braun Strowman or whatever Adam Shear, Adam, you know, Schaefer or whatever the hell Adam okay. Sandler, whatever his damn name is, you know, they're not coming in cheap. You're going to yeah. pay them their fee, no matter yeah. what. They're not going to say, "Oh, well, this is, uh, you know, it's our company coming in." So we're going, we're going to. We're going to come in for less, you know, yeah. we'll cut a deal with you. You know, I, I just don't see that happen. I could be wrong. They could, mm -hmm. they could say, well, we'll come in for 500 bucks a piece, you know, and give us part of the gate. I, I have no idea, but I just, I just don't see them taking a cut and pay to uh, come and do shows, uh, uh, you know, in other people's areas. Well, the thing that kills me about something like that is, is, is control your narrative just those two, or is it another bunch of indie guys? See, I don't underneath? know. They're the face of it. There could be other people. Yeah, see, I mean, that's you know what, what kills me. If those other indie guys that's been going around with them lose a place to work, you know, that, of course, but they'll be able to go to other promoters and be like, hey, I worked with control your narrative. Yeah, but, but, but will it work without those two? Right. I, I don't Probably. see it working without them two. And, and WWE's not going to let Strowman come back to do it. He's mm -hmm. done and control your narrative. They're not going to let him run around doing little indie shows. No. And, and you know, then come back and main event, you know, SummerSlam or something. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And I don't know about EC3. Nobody ever really wanted him a whole lot to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, he just bounced around for whoever would have him. Now he's in the NWA. So he could, he could still do the control your narrative thing. But I don't think he was the draw of the two. No, I mean you know what I'm saying. I don't. I don't think he was the. I don't think he was the cog making the machine run. So, you know, I don't think they can pull it off without Strowman, and I damn sure know they can't pull it off without both of them. Well, yeah, we'll see. You know, another another indie bites the dust. But you know, we've been around for thirty years. So yes, we have. So we'll see what happens. I could be wrong. They might be around for 30 years. They, I, they I, might. You know, for the boys' sake, I hope I'm wrong, but yeah. I, I don't think so. Don't think so. Yeah. I mean, we always want to see the independent scene healthy. Yes. So everybody that wants to can find a place to work. All right, gentlemen. Well, we are out of time. I guess we need to go find out what's going on uh, on TBS tonight. It ought to be pretty interesting. But, and uh, I got to go do another show in 30 minutes. Yeah. And I've got to get this one to all the places it needs to go. So. Anyway, so thank you, Sergeant Stryker. Thank you, Rick Diesel, for weighing in on the big uh, CM Punk debacle. 
we'll call it, and we'll see what happens as we move forward. And fans, don't forget to join us again here next week. Hopefully, we'll be back on Facebook Live, but if not, we'll be on as quick as we can on Monday on YouTube and all your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget, on September 17th, we'll be right back at Veterans Park in Mount Airy for another super spectacular card of AIWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. All the top stars are scheduled to be there. I've seen a preliminary card, although I'm not allowed to announce matches early, man. I'm telling you. Ooh, it's safe enough to be a hot one. Yes, it is. Don't worry. There's going not going to be any dull after effects, hangover effects from deal with the steel. It's going to be Katie bar the door come September 17th, and you do not want to miss it. So, any final thoughts before we go? No, sir. I got to hit it. All right. Nope. Well. For Sergeant Kevin Stryker, for Commissioner Rick Diesel, I am Mad Matt Carter. Thanking you so much for tuning in to Ringside Wrestling. And we will see you next week, fans. And until next time, so long for now.